slow down Clay and Steph, you put the onus on Harrison Barnes and make him beat you. And now a couple of years ago when the Spurs and Warriors met in the uh, Western Conference semifinals, Harrison Barnes had a really, really good series. The Spurs had nobody to really match up with him. Ginobili tried. He just, you know, Barnes was too big for him. So, Absolutely, the Spurs are right there because they run the same type of motion offense as the Warriors. As a matter of fact, the Warriors mimic the San Antonio Spurs offense. Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge is still a player. I know he hasn't got incorporated into that offense as we thought he would right away, but he's still a problem. Uh, he can give Draymond Green some fits. Now Draymond will give him some fits too, but you know, Aldridge is nothing to laugh at. Absolutely, people out here are still looking at the Spurs and look, they're 18 and 5. I mean, any other NBA season, you're thinking like, oh, man, the Spurs are rolling. They're the yeah. top team. Yeah. But the Warriors with the streak has kind of overshadowed all that. So, absolutely, the Spurs have the peace to, to compete with the Warriors and really get them some trouble. And I can't wait for these teams to match up. Yeah, they'll, they'll play for a while, though. I don't wait, but January is first game yeah. they play? Yeah, yeah, I believe Jan- yeah, I believe January. And then they'll play the Warriors will play OKC, Oklahoma City, until February. Really? So, Damn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will say this though, for all the, I, I'm going to say this though, it's the Spurs, people who uh, think the Spurs are a challenger, and, and which they are. But to me, it comes down to Tony Parker. If Tony Parker's not healthy, it don't matter. I don't care. Yeah, if, I, don't, right. I don't care if you got David yep. West or LaMarcus Aldridge. Remember yep. last year? He wasn't healthy, and they lost yeah. the clip in the first round. Yeah. If Tony Parker is not healthy come April, yeah. they, 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 they will flame out in the first, second round again. Yeah. No, and, and, and you're that. right. And I don't know how. I don't know how much Tony Parker has left in the gas because defensively he has been liability. And if he's stuck on Curry, like if he can't guard Curry or at least stay in front of him, then you've got a problem with your San Antonio. You're going to have to take him out the game because you can't throw Tony Parker on Clay Thompson. You can't throw him on Jeremiah Green. You can't have him guard uh, Harrison Barnes. What do you do with him? Do you take him out and then you just bring Ginobili in and have him run the point or Kawhi be a point forward? I don't know. That's and that's what makes the Warriors so special. Yeah. They're a matchup nightmare, and everybody talks about their small lineup. Uh, when they roll out, you know, Andre Iguodala, Harrison Barnes, Jermon Green, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, and sometimes Sean Livingston. Uh, Sean Livingston made a big impact last year in the Western Conference Finals. Remember Game Two? Uh, no, excuse me, Game One, where he scored 16 in second quarter, and he's playing small. It, to me, this small lineup is deadly, but they're not really small because Harrison Barnes has a big wingspan. He's six eight. 230 with a big wingspan. Andre Iguodala has a hell of a wingspan. Uh, these guys can, they're interchangeable. They, you know, they switch on the pick and roll. That lineup is tough to match up with. And I think the Spurs, they have some pieces to match up with that lineup. But again, like you said, it comes down to Tony Parker being healthy. It comes down to Manu Ginobili being healthy. Um, we'll see. They're, they're kind of on their last legs. They're past their prime. I don't know how much they have. Um, and then that's where we get into OKC, EJ. Uh, what is Oklahoma City going to do? Because they have the explosiveness to score with the Warriors. There's no doubt about that. Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook can throw up 60 to 70 points by themselves. You know, what is Deion Waiters going to do in a game like that? What is Serge Ibaka going to do in a game like that? You know, I believe Anthony Roberson is Tony Allen. There's a poor man, Tony Allen, and we saw how the Warriors made the adjustment in the Western Conference semifinals last year against the Memphis Grizzlies, where they said, you know what, Tony Allen, go ahead and shoot it. And so that's where Roberson, who's very good defensively, they're going to get in trouble because the Warriors are going to say, go ahead, Roberson, go ahead, pull away from 23 feet. And that's not going to work out well right. for OKC. And, I, and, I, and I'm still trying to figure out who, who OKC is. Like, to me, I know they're yeah. a really good team. It could be great. I just don't know, you know, with his new coach, Billy Donovan, whatever, I just don't know who they are just yet. No, nah, nobody does. Nobody does. And, and I think Billy Donovan is still trying to tinker with that lineup. Sometimes he's finishing games with DJ Augustine and Russell Westbrook in the backcourt. Sometimes he's finishing with Russell Westbrook and Deion Waiters in the backcourt. He's still trying to figure out what the magic potion is for that team to finish games. And right now, to me, it just looks like another Scott Brooks team. I don't yeah. see much difference between last year's Oklahoma City or two, the previous, so, you know, the previous four years of what Oklahoma City was doing and what they're doing now. And but just a side note, Scott Brooks, I don't think it's fired if Oklahoma City's healthy. They just haven't had the health. You know, ever since the 2011 finals, they haven't went into the playoffs healthy yet, whether it's been Durant, Durant, whether it's been Westbrook, whether it's been Ibaka. They just haven't been healthy when it's come to April and May. Very true. 
Um, when is uh, Harrison Barnes getting back? They say he's going to be back next home stand, but we'll, I think they're going to be cautious with Harrison because that was a severely sprained ankle, high ankle sprain, um, and they're, they're winning games without him. Uh, he may be back by Christmas, but we don't know. I think they're going to be very, very cautious with Harrison. It wouldn't shock me if he was back after the new year. So that's where we are with that. And I think the same thing with Clay Thompson. If they feel like, you know, tonight, if he's only 75%, he's going to sit out. So, and that's the benefit of being 23 and 0, where you can kind of stagger some of these guys back. Um, Brandon Rush, you know, granted, I, I thought he was washed, man. I, I thought he was done. I was wondering why he was on the roster. Last but, week at Sacramento, well, two weeks ago, rather. No, he's been playing well in place of Harrison Barnes. He's giving him 17 to 20 minutes a game. Uh, he's averaging about nine points, and, and that's all you need from him. You know, he's been looking good, shooting the three. Uh, he's been still in minutes for the Warriors, and so that's why I think they'll stagger Harrison Barnes back and make sure that help that ankle is 100% healthy. Because it was a scare. When he, when he sprained that ankle in Phoenix, the way it looked, it looked like he was going to be out a month or two, um, a couple months. I mean, it looked like it could have been a fracture ankle. could have been something serious. So they dodged the bullet there with Harrison, and I think they're going to play play it by ear with him and just be super, super cautious. So how much longer before Luke – before uh, Luke Walton because Lakers coach. Because you know Barron Sy ain't going to survive this year. Come on now. And you know Luke going to get that job. Come on now. Hey, you know what? People are <laughs> – I told somebody this. I said, you know, he's going to be a hot commodity. Um, the thing is, does Luke want to leave this personnel? Does Luke want to leave this regime that looks like they're primed to be a dynasty here uh, in the NBA? Does he want to go to L.A. now? L.A. is going to be in a very – you know, luxurious spot here. Post Kobe, though. Uh, comes Co- post time. Kobe. You know, post Kobe, you know, they're looking at BS. And when I say BS, they're looking at Ben Simmons. Um, if they can get him. And I look, I like what D'Angelo Russell and Julius Randle have been doing lately. You know, I don't know what the heck Byron Scott is thinking, benching them yeah. and not giving these young guys run. Um, I mean, that's what it, by the way, Byron Scott's one of the most, most incompetent jobs in the history of the NBA. I Granted, he's stuck with the whole Kobe thing. You know, the Kobe situation. Nah, it's beyond Kobe thing. That's, that's beyond it. That's on Byron Scott, man. So, you know, Luke Walton, he's going to be a hot commodity. And, no, it wouldn't shock me if he took a job with the Lakers. You know, it would be interesting to see what happens in Philadelphia. Um, he's not going to be with the Warriors too much longer because he's proved that he can handle the NBA roster. He's done a great he's job. Gotta with paid, with this team. He's got to get paid, man. He's got to get paid. He can't get paid being an assistant. Come on now. <laughs> you, you, y'all can't, look, 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 look. Y'all, y'all can't be greedy now. Y'all can't be greedy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, you, you know, it'll be interesting, man, we'll to see what happens with Luke, man. But he's definitely <laughs> he's definitely doing this thing, and he, he has future head coach written all over him. Yeah, I, yeah, definitely. Um, couple cool question to let you go, man. What do you think about the, the Aisha Dai- Dai- Curry uh, controversy last week on Twitter? It was much to do about nothing. Exactly. She spoke her mind. She spoke her mind. People just, you Love know. Love that girl, and, man. And, and she, was, she, she, was, she, yeah, she was right. She was like, look, I, I prefer to just, you know, the only time I, people need to see my goods is when I'm in the bedroom room with my man. There's nothing wrong with saying that. There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, you could be classy without showing anything. That's the type of lady we all aspire for. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. there's, you know, it was much to do about nothing. There's, it's just haters. People hating because, you know. Aisha Curry's winning right now. She's got a cooking show. She's got two beautiful daughters. They got a new three point two million dollar home in the East Bay. You know, her husband's the MVP and possibly the best, the most he said the most impactful player right now in the world. People just hating. That's all. I didn't even look into it, man. I I really didn't. I kinda scrolled through and and I said, She's right. right. What what are people what are people crying about? Right. And to be fair also too, there were there were I I would dare say there are more positive uh feedback towards her the negative and I just think that we yep. in the media like to like to harp on the negative because that's the ones that seem to yeah. speak the loudest. You right, I'm right. I, I just thought it was, I just thought it was a non news story. You know, I was just shocked that it was like news. Yeah. You know, she sent out a tweet and you know, all of a sudden there's people writing about it and there's people commenting and yeah, most of the feedback was positive, like you said. Um but I was just like, this is not a news story. Are we that bored right now? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, and I post. And that's what I said. Like, if you're the, if you're the person that's sitting there like criticizing that comment, then you're part of the problem. And maybe you need to look at yourself yeah. and see what you're doing with your life. Right. Yeah. Look in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. Last question. Let you go, brother. We'll, we'll talk a little football. I, not, I don't want to depress you, bro. Oh, but, uh, what's man. going on with the Niners, bro? Oh, what's going on with the Niners? <laughs> now, no, to be fair, they've looked. They showed some life the last couple of weeks, man. 
This was they, a they had hey, Blaine Mike Gabbard and, era, man. Blaine Gabbard, what's going on? Hey, look. Hey, look. He could be a good placeholder. And Blaine's in a situation where it's low risk, high reward, where he, he's basically playing for his NFL career. If he doesn't show anything on tape, this is his last stop. It's to the CFL. It's holding a clipboard as a third-string quarterback. He's actually I'm, – I'm warm to the fact that, you know what, he can go into next season as a starter because this team has a lot of holes. But let's just be honest. This team, they, there's going to possibly be four offensive linemen gone next year that's going to be replaced, including Alex Boone. Um, defensive line needs to be retooled because the last four drafts by Trent Balfe haven't been great, and you can see that now with the depth. It's really impacted this team, per se. Um, you need another linebacker to go alongside Navarro Bowman. You need some secondary help. You know, you're probably going to have to replace Anquan Bolden. But as far as starting with Blaine Gabbert, I'm not, I'm not mad at keeping Blaine Gabbert and then drafting a quarterback and just having him sit behind Grant Blaine Gabbert. Um, Blaine Gabbert showed him to just be a pro. I'm happy for the guy. You know what I mean? I got right. nothing against him. No, he no. looked bad in Jacksonville, but let's be honest, that situation in Jacksonville was a very decrepit situation. It was very, very you know, that that situation was weak for him. He had no shot to succeed. So looking at what he's doing out here, he's winning some games. Look, I'm not gonna drink the Kool-Aid and say, Oh man, he's been a godsend. He's been unbelievable. Let's be honest. If Robbie Gold makes that kick, that game doesn't go to overtime. I believe Blaine Gabber finishes with 130 passing yards or something like that. Right. He didn't pass. He didn't have a pass. He didn't complete a pass uh, more than 10 yards in the air. Like, no, no, no. So it was it was a lot of dink and dunking. Um, he has shown me some athleticism, which I didn't think he had. But that's been the long bright spot in what has otherwise been a year full of nightmares, man. It is just no. It is just an ugly situation. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna lean on you on this one because you are the man of the people in the Bay Area. You know, shout out to Mason that, by the way. Um, right. the, uh, the great Tim Kawakami had actually put up a tweet last week saying there was some major news or major stories to come out about the Niners and some about some dysfunction and stuff. Um, do you know anything what's going on with that yet? And, and he's leaked out because I haven't heard anything well, since since well, the uh, tease. Well, what happened was Jed York's right hand man, Parag Mara, who helped structure the deal for the new stadium, who helped, you know, sign contracts and deals with the salary cap. He was reassigned. He was basically demoted, and he's now going to be just running Jed's MLS team, the Sacramento Republic. Okay. Um, so there was a shakeup, and Parag Marov was to believed to be one of the leaks to everything that was going on, leaking news about Kaepernick, leaking news about Jim Harbaugh, leaking news about snitches and all that. But really, Jed York, that's his fall guy. You know, Jed York – had something to do with that. And so basically he just pinned it on Parag Mathurah and said, you know what, we're putting it on him. He's not going to be our president anymore, blah, blah, blah. The, the whole front office is dysfunctional, man, because this guy Parag was actually trying to work with coaches and trying to work with them on time management, analytics, and stuff like that. This guy's a business guy. This guy's a dude from Cal Stanford who doesn't come from a football background. So the the issue with Parag was like, why does this guy have so much power? He's not a football guy. He doesn't. He, he's and that was a part of the problem with Jim Harbaugh. He's like, you got all these guys running around here, not helping the football team. It's more about the business and the whole stadium issues and how do we make a buck? How do we make you know this stadium user friendly? I was down there Saturday at Levi Stadium covering the Pac-12 championship between Stanford and uh, USC, and. What I get out of that stadium is like, man, this is just, it feels like I'm in a corporate building. <laughs> it feels like I'm in, a, I'm, in a, I'm in a corporation here. You know, you're sitting in the press box, you can't really hear the sound because they have the windows and closed and it's kind of soundproof. And it's just like, it felt like I was watching a game from the hospital room or something like that. Right. You know, it was just kind of, it, it's no energy in that stadium right now. Um, and so with that front office shakeup, that's, that's the first of many, I believe. I don't know necessarily if Kurt Balky is going to get fired, the 49ers general manager, because think about it. You're Jed York, and you say, hey, we want to win with class. The moves we're doing is to help us win. He's not going to go. He essentially said two years ago that if it came down to it, he was going to pick Balky over Harbaugh. Balky was his guy. Well, he can't go fire Harbaugh one year and then fire Trent Balky the next. So I think Bad we're going look. to see yeah. Trent Balky back. We're going to see Jim Tom Sula back. 
Um, and again,